Hello and welcome to 4000 Accounting. I'm Watty. Today I'm joined by Mr. Scott Plues. Plusy, obviously I'm repping the gloves off for tonight's episode. How how are you? How's business? How's gloves off? How's the roller rink? It's all going on in Mr. Scott Plues' world right now. Yeah, thanks for having me tonight, Watty and the uh, guys at 4000 Accounting. Um, yeah, just very busy. The brand, the, the, the shop, etc., uh, the roller hub things things are very busy up here in Kirkcaldy. Uh, so all good, all going in the right direction. Much as it's stressful, it's uh, it's that's why you do it. You want to you want to keep yourself moving and rolling and moving in the right direction. So yeah, all good up here. Thank you. So obviously, myself and Mark were up uh, for a, for a road trip at the start of the season. We got through to Kirkcaldy. The shop is now pretty much bang smack over the road from the rink talk about great location have you found that's been good for business um having everyone just like literally on your doorstep the shop being there you guys seem super easily accessible to everybody yeah exactly uh going back many 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 moons you'll know yourself Canham was uh, right next door to where i am uh so uh, and it's not been there for many years so when that shop was available um i did ask uh, friends, good friends and family, the wife and stuff about doing what I wanted to do and I've always wanted to have that shop but I, I looked at buying can when it was closing down I had discussions about it so um, yeah the location is like you said accessible to everyone uh, it's not a passing trade thing as you as you know, it's, it's people come across from the ice rink um, so yeah it's it's constantly expanding, but the building's not expanding. So it's, you uh, need it's to get a bigger, bigger building. Yeah, I need to keep more stock, and I, I don't have a stock room, so uh, it's it's tough to. But I keep on top of it, so it's not a bad problem to have. It's a great problem to have. Obviously, yeah. you're seeing you guys a little bit more more vocal on social media. A couple of competitions going on, and giveaways, and raffles, and stuff. Is that just about to continue to get that brand out there? Keep getting, you know, getting the hats out, getting the hoodies out. Um, obviously you got like the, the clothes itself, but then you, you, you had a shit ton of decent equipment when I was up the road the other day, you had nice sticks and everything else that you would need. Yeah. I mean, it all, it all started off with clothing, obviously, and it's progressed into the, the protective side of ice hockey. So that's not been a progression. It's just been a straight in, uh, and every single penny that keeps coming in is geared towards getting more and more stock so that people come in and, and they can get what they want at the time. Um, that's not easy, but uh, it's all accessible for, for everyone. The giveaways, the social media and stuff, it's, as you as you know, it's how, it's how business works. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to do it. First, my first time I've like, we discussed it before we sort of logged on here. What when you hear your own voice, it's tough going. But I, uh, it's, <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm going to have to get used to it. I dial, dial down my uh, Kirkcaldy accent. So <laughs> but everything's, uh, uh, as I said before, it's going in the right direction, and it's a learning curve for me, and I'm, and I'm enjoying it, which is the biggest thing, the biggest reason that I do it is I want to enjoy it. So. You uh, you obviously you mentioned the, the the roller hub, something we've spoke about, you know, kind of off air. But just tell the people what it's all about, where the idea come from, and uh, explain a little bit of the kind of programs that you guys are putting in place there. Yeah, so I started off in, in the shop. Uh, one of the young guys uh, that started ice hockey, his dad sort of got talking to me, and that, and I mentioned that he said they should have a roller rink to, for the guys in the off season. And I says, well, the only issue with the roller rink is space. And he says, I've got space. So I was like, well, let's let's okay, go see let's your talk. space. <laughs> let's go see it. And we, I think we went down the next day. Or, and uh, I was like, okay, and it's a big space, but it's, it's roofed the floor with racking, like like industrial racking. He goes, I'll get rid of this. Phoned the guy in front of me. Guy says, it'll take me less than a day to get rid of this. And I was like, right, okay. So... and. and Jeff, his name is, uh, his company's called Collected Deliver, his unit and stuff. He just said, let's do it. And let's, we, we literally met up with the blacksmith, designed the boards. And we've got some really good help from guys that played in the recreational hockey team. 
uh, tradesmen, painters, joiners, uh, etc. So they all, all got, basically jumped in and uh, went for it. And it, it just grew arms and legs. We wanted to keep kids busy, hockey kids busy, ice hockey kids busy during the summer. Next thing you know, it's uh, we've, we've got a roller hockey team started up. Um, and again, Dundee, where all the roller hockey happens, uh, there's only one in Scotland. Uh, we, they're, they want us to do well. If, if we do well, we, we, we help them. And now yeah. we're moving into doing... Um, I've just been shooting a promo tonight. Uh, we, a wee video with some... Uh, we're going to do a thing called the School of Excellence with some ex-professional players to help kids, adults, all, all, all ages, all levels for stick handling, passing, shooting, stuff you can do in your trainers. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's it's all... All we want to do is help people become better at a sport, but also get them out of the house. You know what I mean? Kids yeah, and adults 100%. are like... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good space. It's a good community thing. And the weekends is public skating. We've, we've, we've invested in hired skates and stuff. So, yeah, it's... It's all progression, and it's all progression to hopefully over the next, I don't know, maybe a year, two years, that you know, we might actually have, we might have to get a purpose-built place. You know what I mean? It's, that's that's the aim. If you get enough people interested, man, and that's, that's fantastic. And the other thing is, you know, as well as I do, in a niche sport, by the way, we'd love a dog on 4,000 account. Look at the dog just chilling. Yeah. <laughs> um, a niche sport like Roller, it... It has the beauty that you don't need the the mad ice time costs. You can keep the cost down. The skills are fundamentally the same. You you're working on technique. You probably chances are if you're an ice hockey player, going to be a bunch of, uh, around a bunch of your teammates because they're going to join up as well. So you're going to have that r rink away from the rink. You're going to be spending more time together. Which when it comes back to you know as well as I do, Pluzy, the more time you spend with the boys, girls, whatever it may be. On a Saturday, on a Sunday, you feel more together. It's a lot easier to compete as a team. So I think it has lots of benefits for, for, for the on-ice product as well as the off-ice product. Yeah, big time. I mean, Dar Darryl Venters, is, he's, 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 he want, he's a sort of driving force to, to help us. We, we've, we've started something and, and Darryl is completely invested in it in a way that yeah, we all understand. Some people will tell you that roller deteriorates ice player, ice hockey players and it's like well there's there's some truth in it but some of the best players in the world will go out and play roller hockey uh, you know what I mean they literally love playing roller hockey in the summer and stuff so it's got its fundamentals but what we are doing is uh, yeah we're, we're allowing the kids especially kids at the moment they're all they're invested in it with their time their mums and dads come down and they all sit around and they chat uh, but no, keeping them off the streets at night, massive. It's a massive thing. Basing, uh, sort of working on their fundamental skills, especially stick on the, you know yourself, you, you meet some yeah. roller hockey players and they come on the ice and their hands are... Their hands are They've got the hands team, haven't they? They've got dangles. So, so yeah, so things like that. We're, we, we understand what we're doing. We've all played ice hockey all days. So we understand the, the differences and... and uh, my kids jump for roller on the ice. They're going to take a couple of couple of couple of minutes, five minutes to find the blades, find their, their edges and stuff. Yeah. That, that's you know I mean that's part of learning as well. So it's all uh, yeah, it's good for it's, it's it's good for what it's built for, and that's uh yeah, that's to get ice hockey people involved with roller and have and get the roller people that don't have the money to spend yeah. it's hundreds of pounds a month to go on the ice. As well as the equipment, so we we've been given equipment by the Kikora Ice Hockey Junior Development, and people Amazing. come down and just all they need rollerblades, and they, they get all the kit for to try for free, and it's only yeah. five pound a session. You know what I mean? So yeah, so and they cheap, could progress. So ice hockey. Yeah, they could, could yeah. easily progress to ice hockey. Yeah. While we're talking about roller, and just because I was in a bit of a, a YouTube rabbit hole the other day, not normally something I would watch on YouTube, but it's 10 minutes of the best Conor Bedard highlights playing roller hockey. It's not even right. fucking fair. It's not even fair. <laughs> he's just breaking guys' ankles. Every time he comes down, he's, he's like, he's going 
obviously he's a righty, so he's going down the left wing. He shoots his backhand, crossbody, <laughs> top catcher, but like a slap shot. And it's just the guy is sick. You telling me it's gonna make him a worse hockey player that he plays well enough? No. no. It looks so much fun as well, by the way. There's like everyone's chucking source passes out. No one's trying to run you from behind into the boards. Uh, it, it, no. it looked like it looked like a good time to be fair. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I, I used to put when the ice used to come off from when we, we played pro when we were young and all the ice hockey guys we were all playing at Kirkcaldy when ice come off. And it was great fun, but I had not touched rollerblades since then. So you're talking 25 years plus. And uh, I put a set on. I got a shot my mate. Everyone's at me. You know what I mean? You have a hockey shop, you sell rollerblades. Why are you not going on? I'm like, not a chance. <laughs> I put a set on. Started getting 10 minutes. I was starting to feel, feel like this is easy. Took a shot, square on my backside. <laughs> hurt, my elbow, hurt my elbow, hurt my hip. I was like, no, <laughs> no slide, no slide in, no, no, nothing. Just that's me. I'm done. So no, my my roller hockey did. It started and finished within about fifteen minutes. This, this year, so. <laughs> I imagine I wouldn't be. Uh, I wouldn't be too far away from that myself. What's the uh, <laughs> what's the feeling like within Kakadi? Obviously, like I said, myself and Mark were up there. We watched a bit of the bit of the the senior team. But obviously they got the, they got the cash reserve, then they've got uh, the junior development. What's what's like the latest news coming out of Kokodi end? So with myself joining the under sixteens alongside Daryl Venter, uh, looking to sort of progress myself and back into coaching when I when I gave up about four or five years ago. Um Kokodi's such a it's it's never changed. It's such a busy turnover with with kids, you know what I mean? Um such a, a shame that some kids are, aren't allowed to progress. Uh, it's so busy. Uh, and one of the reasons with the Roller Hub is that if kids can't progress, they can't move to another club, then they can come and, they can come and do Roller. So there was a bit of, a bit of that involved. But yeah, Kestrels, um, they've got some old-timers in there. Guys, I've seen guys that. <laughs> Finn and, and Kyle and uh, Jimmy Wilson and stuff. There's, there's some good boys in there, but there's... Uh, Chad Reek, he made a comeback as well. That's right, Chad. Aye, aye Chad. So, uh, all good boys. Good boys to have young boys grow up with. Um, uh, but I've just... The, we can't really talk about junior development or, or Kershaw's with it mentioning the Flyers and... and the elite league and and that's a it's a as you would call it a completely different rabbit hole. But the the five junior development will always be strong. Uh, but you know they're, they're making Darrow's making moves on getting um, Jamie up. You know Jamie, uh, what's Jamie's second name? Elson. Yes. He does. Uh, I forget the name of what he does, but he's he's coming up and spending some time with the junior development. The coaches are all going on. And just learning that by that by uh, I seen Sean Easton was uh, OGB okay. coach. Uh, coach Sean, he's involved with with Jamie. Um, but yeah, so they're they're looking at coming through with it, like sort of moving forward with the times, uh, uh, getting a different kind of mentality in ice hockey. Uh, it's not just all, you know, it's not just all sort of training and games, training and games. But, and, I, and hopefully I'm going to try and get more involved in that sort of mental side of the game as well and make it, make it more more for kids to become better people as well as better hockey players, which is, that's that's my that's why I'm getting involved. That's what I like about ice hockey. It helps you become a person, sociable, more sociable person. You might be, you know what I mean, more confident, all that, all that side of the game. I like all that side of the game. Well, you know, as well as I do, there, there's people that definitely suffer out there with lack of confidence, lack of belief, so many different ways of like putting themselves down or have always been put down that maybe they don't have someone to talk to. Maybe, maybe they decide at 15, 16, you know, fuck this. I'm away. Yeah. I'm going to go do something else. And if we can keep those people in the game, but put them along the right paths where they're going to get the help they need, then yeah. ultimately it's going to keep more people involved in the sport. And it's going to get more people the help they need. I know there's a lot of people. Obviously, you've always said that your kind of DMs are open. There's plenty of people that have been on this, on this show before. There's plenty of people that have reached out to 
um, this show loads of times, and and Scott was saying the same thing for him. Like on the back, <coughs> excuse me, on the back of some conversations that have happened, we've always said it's anonymous on here. Like if you want to reach out, just do that. The amount of people we've had that have said, you know, they're po like a podcast, a certain podcast, a certain guest has gotten through like a real shit sticky time. That's good to know, and it, it, we want to keep continue to help people. Cluzy's much along the same line. I, I know over the years we've done bits for Calm, we've done bits for Mind, and and, and different charities throughout uh, mental health with the podcast. Scott, have you found like obviously you've talked about it on different platforms? You talked to, I mean, I throw it way back about five years ago. I think you were guest number four on on this right. podcast, and we had yeah. a we had we had a mental health episode very early on in the four thousand days. Uh, have you found like people quite regularly reach out to you and is it something that you enjoy obviously you said you enjoy like that kind of mental side of the game yeah yeah definitely I, I mean it's not maybe not as regular as it as maybe made to sound I'm not going to lie about that but when it does happen um, as I, I've mentioned before people I've got friends that check in on me to make sure you know what I mean you're dealing with people that are offloading a lot of stuff onto you and I'm like well that's a I can understand that side of it, but I, uh, I do, I do, I don't enjoy. I don't. It's hard to describe. I don't enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. I but I, I, I get something from it. It makes me feel uh, like I'm doing something right. But no, the, the ice hockey thing is completely. Uh, as you know, there's so many kids could be in a different mindset, and it's hard to get them to change a mindset. But ice hockey keeps them completely grounded, and and they learn different social aspects of, of life. But um, yeah, I mean, strange, complete strangers, guys I've never even heard of, never mind not met, but knew who they were. I've been in touch uh, through DMs, and I've said to, I'll keep saying it. I've had professional help. I'll I'll describe my professional help. I won't try and fix people. Never try and fix someone. I just tell them things that I've been taught, you know, coping mechanisms, all the, all the type of stuff. But I, I'm not going to try and fix you. My ears are open, and that's a massive thing. People can just tell you their thoughts and their feelings and stuff. I'm not here to cast judgment or try this, try that. I'll tell you what I've been taught. But you know, what I mean, you, you might you might have to go away and seek seek more professional help than just me. But when your ears are open, boy, it's, it's, a, big, it's a big thing for someone. Yeah, back to start for someone, it gets it gets the ball rolling. Like you say, even if you do, then have to go on to seek further help. You've yeah. made that first step. You've communicated yeah, something. Yeah. You said about having professional help. I mean, I've done it. I've done therapy and stuff like that before. I think it's fucking fantastic. Uh, and they don't really say much. To be fair, they kind of just yeah. go boom, go, and then you just go, Whoa! and then they'll like <laughs> chip in like twenty minutes later. You look, you're like fucking need a drink, my breath. I've just <laughs> been talking for. And sometimes it is just an ear because you can walk away and I go, I just said fucking nine words in an hour. What's just going on? Uh, but I feel uh, great. Yeah, that's true. So just an ear sometimes is yeah. is is really massive. What uh, what what have you been doing with the uh, Swindon follow up? Have you been up and down? Have you been down to see the boy? What's well, no, this is the see, since Solway joined. The, the league, we've managed to go and see our boy in Solway. Uh, so nice. that's actually perfect timing because they're, they're in Solway this weekend and we're going down and spending the night. And uh, yeah, so we'll catch up, we'll catch up with them uh, before and after games um, and stuff like that. But so it's, yeah, it's, it happens less. Us opening up the shop, it's open at weekends. Um, it's kind of, Narrowed those those trips down. My mates, the the, the entire first move down there. I've, I've we've had some some proper boys trips down in Swindon, and it's been pretty. Nice. <laughs> Just getting after it. Yeah, so they, they still get they're still at me saying, "Let's go. We need to do it again." Uh, that kind of thing. So no, we love Swindon. We we missed last year's um, end of year. In the year awards night, we've been to them, right. most of them, enjoy them and stuff. So, yeah, the shops, the shops kind of curbed that a little bit. But, but the more the shop could start to have people come in and help and run it, the more I can get away with uh, 
definitely getting down to Swindon. A lot of friends down in Swindon now over the years. But, uh, yeah. Tyler's doing well as well. It, here's a question for you then. Do they end up with any silverware this year? Um, From what you've seen so far or what you've been following? They've got a good team. Yeah. They've, they've not got very many. I don't think they've got any weak areas. They're, they're just not... They're just not gelling at the moment. That's my view. And I watch them every weekend. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, will they win anything? They went on a run last year. If they go on a run, they'll, be, they'll, they'll struggle to be beaten. But there's some strong teams in that league this year. You know what I mean? There, there's some proper players that have come, come in at the league as well. Uh, Brits and imports alike, and goalies, etc. Uh yeah, it's, it's, I enjoy the league. I watch it. All, I watch it every weekend. I enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good hockey. What do you make of the uh, input goalie debate? Oh, oh, so, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's pretty bad. What's happened? I, I'm. I'm all for Brit goalies. All for Brit. There's such a. It's such a niche little market. And how could yeah. you stop? How could you stop a Brit goalie? Having the chance to 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 get a spot, I I don't I don't, I don't especially with only with... three. Sorry, I don't agree a bit with... of eye drops. Right. Um, yeah, especially with only three imports, I I can I can see an argument for it either way. I just I think there's good enough goalies. Have the imports proved so far to be any better than what the results would have been with a with a Brit? No, not enough for me. No, definitely not. Do you know what? Like, if a team had an import net miner and they were sat there ten and zero right now, I'd be like, do you know what? Fuck it, have your import goalie. I get it. Uh, but none of the teams that have got import net miners <laughs> sat with a, a ten and zero record right now. You're yeah. gonna lose games with Brits. You're gonna lose games with imports. Sometimes yeah. your import goalie's gonna let in eight goals. Sometimes he's gonna get fucking two shutouts on a weekend. It's it's a some weird ice hockey position. Yeah, but you can say the same about a lot of British guys in that league as well. That can get yeah. a couple of shout outs a weekend or could win you fucking two massive back to back games on a weekend. Like it I don't know. Don't know where I sit. I, I, I completely <laughs> disagree with it. And I think it was one of the worst moves I've made. But you, you know what I mean? You gotta roll with it. You can't even fight against it. It's you could fight against it, but um are the people that's making their, their changes I, I, I don't know. Was it the very first? Was it a gentleman's handshake, and then Peter went against it? That's what I've kind of picked up over the, the this this uh, season. I don't know how true that is, but I've heard the very yeah. the very same. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. And then once one team does it, it kind of opens it up for everybody else to get involved, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've seen a couple of the guys they go these stats and where they played and stuff. I was expecting some. I was expecting some serious goaltending. Yeah, but same. I seen, I seen it, and I'm like, no, not for me, not for me. And um, these these lads could all like stop the puck. They're all probably pretty decent, but is it is it worth an import slot? I I don't think it is. Is it worth the lack of British development? Probably not either. So you got a you got to give these boys the opportunity to to continue to play games to get better and yeah. you've seen the guys that have been successful you know Ben Bowles Hull had to take a big gamble on him when when he left the Scimitars he went across to the I think it was the Stingrays then and they they played him like 48 times that year or whatever it was like he he logged minutes yeah. you got to play these guys to give them an opportunity to know how good they're going to be like Merge was good when he was with me in Swindon and then the games when he played with Cardiff. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Uh, the games he played with Cardiff, again, legit. Jackson Whistle, another, I know, not technically fully British trained, but he's been around here, class of British goalie for a long time. He's playing good minutes. You've got to give the guys some ice time and you've got to let them develop. If they're stuck behind import netminders in the National League, it's just a, it's just another step in the ladder that doesn't probably need to be there. Yeah. I mean, the, the elite league's on its own and... Um... Fire away, but if you're if the league is going to need a quality Brit to back up, never mind get games, they're, they're going to need to be playing in the NIHL. They're going to yeah. need to be known to be a proper top end goalie. 
But now, now they're going to hit a little certain areas, certain clubs. I mean, they're going to have to move away to try and show their showcase what they've got. So, but no, no, to to cut that one short, it's I don't agree agree with it. (laughs) How many? uh, No, not sorry, not how many. How much attention do you do you keep on British hockey as a whole now? Do you follow the elite league or you just follow the national? You you keeping in touch with the SNL? I follow the elite league when I've got my five pound notes on it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, fair. Uh, even that's even that's a, a bit dubious. Uh, but no, I, I've got no interest in the elite league whatsoever. Zero. Uh, I watch, like I said, I stream the NHL, um, home and away games with Tyler. So I enjoy that league. I enjoy what I enjoy the standard, and I'm, I'm invested in watching it because it's Brits. Um, I like seeing I like seeing guys that are, I know who they are and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that's that's that. I don't go down that. I go down the way after that. I don't go to the elite league. Um, somebody says I think it was last season about going to a game. I said you you couldn't you couldn't pay me to go watch it. No. And then I was, there, I was at a night out, and the guy says, "Look, we're all we're all heading up to the to watch the Flyers. I've got tickets." I said, "Obviously." No, no, I've said it before. I, you couldn't pay me to go. So no, I'm not interested. No, I'm not, not interested. It's... What about the SNL boys? Do you ever go watch them boys trying not to have a heart attack or what? <laughs> <laughs> aye. Aye. It's, uh, I keep an eye on their scores. I keep an eye on their scores. I am genuinely so busy uh, when I'm not at the ice rink. I'm, I'm trying to chill out a bit. Uh, yeah, so I'm not gonna, I don't go watch SNL, but I keep an eye on all their scores. Who's doing keep an eye on the boys. That? Yeah. What um what about the national team? Do you, do you keep any sort of uh, attention on the, the GB senior team at all? Um no, not not really. Uh I, I keep an eye on the scores. I'm, I'm good friends with, with Pedro, with Peter. Uh yeah, and, and Peter actually reached out to me talking about um my video social media thing and, and Peter reached out to me, which was quite quite good and, and I and I told him I respected what he does. But he's he's coaching elite. I understand the, the elite to the Brit the British senior game. I understand all the what's happening. I understand it all. Do I agree with it? I don't. I don't agree with it. So uh, the, the the British senior team. Um, what too many Joe Nats for you? Well, it's it's never changed. It was like that when I was young. So I, 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 I you know what I mean, would, would I have played in it if I was asked or good enough? probably wouldn't have turned it down, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I would, I would think you would be the same. Uh, I wouldn't have turned it down. You want to be you want to be up there. Uh, 100%. No, I went, even right down to the juniors, um, I enjoyed my time at GB16s. Um, did I agree with coaching things that went on? No. So that's why I left. Uh, stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's no tough for me. It's no tough for me to say that I don't pay attention to the GB senior team, but uh, yeah, I'll keep an eye on their scores and stuff. It's just interesting to see, like when you chat to former players, what sort of what sort of level of interest they keep in the game, and I think it kind of does differ if they have kids or the kids playing, what sort of level the what sort of level they're playing at. Some guys, I don't think I've ever fucking stepped foot back in an ice rink like once. <laughs> Took that kit off for their last game, and that was it. Yeah, I, I, Sam Godfrey actually, he said that to me. Last time I was down at the Harvey, we were chatting, I was like, hey, do yeah, yeah, you know, another couple of years. And then he's like, yeah, that's me, bye. Fucking, you'll never see me in a nice drink ever again. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, kind of res- I kind of respect it. Just like, no, just no. one final swan song and then that's it. Off you go, never to be seen again. But yeah. I kind of like, I kind of like that. What uh, what else you got planned for the for the rest of the year here? Obviously, the, the Roller Hub's now going to be offering like the School of Excellence programs and stuff like that. Where do you where do you envision this going over the next kind of six eight months? Here? Well, obviously with the I mean, the season, I'm back coaching with the kids and that. And I co- I, co- I do some coaching with the recce hockey as well. Uh, started back playing um, with the Highlanders, uh, so I, I kind of enjoy that. It's not easy on the on the old back, but um, yeah, as far as the the hub goes, we're pushing the the school of excellence and, and training and stuff. We're going to be looking at getting teams at all age levels to, to join a league 
uh, the Scottish League. Um, but yeah, the business side of things, I'm just going to be pushing to to start to be able to deal in different, uh, different or higher end. As people know, the problems we've had with Bauer and stuff. So I understand that position, but I'm going to be pushing to knocking on the door to try and uh, yeah, sort of expand my business. I mean, the shop's not going to expand physically, but I may have somewhere that that could uh, move into having having space, bigger space for for things to like shooting areas, etc. That's all. That, I mean, I've always moved forward. I do have something in the pipeline, which I'll. It'll come up through time and it'll probably be right up your street, what to be honest, but we'll maybe okay, talk about that. I'd be interested to hear about that. <laughs> camera, but yeah, yeah, we'll, I'm, I've got a friend of mine who's, uh, we're putting our heads together and coming up with something. So, um, yeah, starting the business, the shop, it's opened up my eyes to, to uh, doing stuff that I enjoy doing for a living. Like what you've done with, yes. with the gym and stuff. And you, 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 I want to wake up in the morning and go to my job and do what, I, you know what I mean? You only get one crack at this. So um, it, it's took me, for, I'm 48 now and I'm like, I try and tell my kids this, you've got one crack at it, do not, do not wake up in the morning and not want to go Regret. to work. Yeah, not want to go. It's, it's not easy. It's not as easy as that. Well, no. So yeah, work towards something and that's that's what I'm going to be doing. That's awesome. Uh, what's it been like being back involved with the sixteens? How have you found like the standard of the hockey across across the league? What are the kids like? Yeah, it's uh, it's been an eye opener. I, I mean, I started coaching at learn to play tens, twelves, coaching my own kids and yeah. that, and uh, the sixteens. Then I, I went to the nineteens and I was there for my last few years, and that I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that level. This year, the sixteens, things have changed. Coach, coaching's changed not in a not in a way of physically, but more it's more changed. Uh, which how would you even describe it? Like not emotionally, but it's like you can, there's no old school coaching allowed anymore. You know what I mean? There's kids there's, are always fannies. That's why it's, it's 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 tough. You need to think before you speak. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd, I'd be fucking humped. <laughs> my ADHD would have a meltdown. Yeah. Uh, so, but we talked about it earlier. I, I enjoy the fact that kids need to be mentally uh, involved or mentally uh, stimulated to to get their attention and to keep their attention. That that kind of side that side of hockey does it does inspire me to learn more about it. So I'm enjoying it. Will I stick at it? Come next summer, I would hope so. As the 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 level, there's some seriously good players. Uh, and but when I see the other clubs, we were winning. I don't know by ten goals or something. And I walked up the bench to Daz and I says, Daz, who's next in line to our team this year? And he goes, To be honest with you, I kind of thought this was going to be the team. And I was like, Right, okay. So that moves you on to having to coach. Differently, you you're yeah. not coaching close games. It needs ice hockey. Britain needs proper turned on its head. You need you need you need triple A. You need double A. You need you need levels. People, you need to compete against your own levels. So um, what you guys have to then go to like Europe or get down to Ozone and play some English teams, or like, you're gonna have to go yeah. out and about to find some some yeah. hockey games for for a challenge. I mean, the, fl the Flames, I never went there at the start of the season, but we had a couple of sessions and they went down to Leeds to play in a tournament. And uh, okay. they, won they won it. They won it. They won it. And uh, the the reaction down there was that they, were, they thought we wouldn't be close to them. And they won, they won it. So, uh, yeah, that I fought for that to get the 19s, get the under-20 British. That's, yeah. I was wanting that to happen and it happened. And... Uh, yeah, I, I reached the twenties final three times and won it once. Um, yeah, when you got Cole Shudra and Kirky going up the the wing on a three on three overtime, it was all it was all over. It was all yeah, over. It's uh, it's cut, it? it was yeah. But that's what that's what you that's what my, I but want you want my that kids. though. No, oh, oh, don't, don't remember that all their days. You know what I mean? 
Hundred percent. That's it's much more competitive. No one remembers when you fucking win ten one and get three goals. No one. You, you score one goal in a two one game and it's in a fucking minute to go. You're going to remember that one forever. Before I let you go, please. The uh, the DOPS has seemed to have changed this year. I know Tyler got stung with it a few times last year. I know you were like watching along when we were fucking chatting about it, myself and Morsey and all. It seems a little bit better this year, does it not? It seems less wild. We haven't seen any like forty-two game suspensions. Actually, maybe, I... maybe just maybe, with the people that are getting involved. Do you think they're they're starting to get a bit of a lid on it? Well, I would, I would hopefully. I'm not sure if that's the reason that things. I'm not sure. I, I mean, what the games I've seen, uh, it's. It's maybe the players have maybe taken a, a a bit on board of what happened last year, as well as maybe different people trying to say, you know what I mean? Yeah, so try that, to keep a lid on it a bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there is a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure now because the, the league's quite. It's going to be close all year. But Tyler had to sit out a game because uh, the last fight in the last five minutes, yeah, a game, and he didn't want to fight. Just somebody grabbed the hold of him and kept, and then wants to fight. Go, You, you and it wasn't even a fight, and it was like, right, you're you're losing, you're missing, you're missing the next game where you should have been might, playing. Might as well throw some hands in, Tyler boy. <laughs> if, yeah, you get, if, you get, if you're getting sussy, lads, you might as well, you might as well have some fun while you're at it. What about the uh, the the addition of Solway? Obviously, you've it's been great for you because you get to go through and watch the boys three three four times a year. But would you make of the addition of Solway to to the national and? Would you like to see perhaps a club from the Fife Dundee sort of area become a second team in that national league and you know display even more of the, the Scottish lads product the product that we got up there? Yeah, hundred hundred percent. I mean, uh, so we going going into that league, it's it's just showing everyone else that it's doable, and uh, who. Where they were before, winning too much, winning all the the, the trebles and the quadruples and stuff, as uh, that's the kind of they, they were making that clear that they belong in the NIHL. They struggled, they struggled a bit last year. They're doing better this year. Um, but should there be a, I think there should be a Dundee, Fife, Aberdeen, Edinburgh. Um, they should all be in. A northern with all your uh, with your leads and stuff, and then and then mix it up and have, it, it's no rocket science. Uh, I, there's some good there's some good talent. I watched obviously the SNL playoffs last year, the the finals there in Edinburgh. Some great talent on every team. There's that, plenty of extra elite league boys and you know. Yep. Fuck, fuck, showing some of the ages of some of the boys. There's some some ex BNL players in there as well. But, um... oh, yeah, no, I... <laughs> um, but as a rule, like there's some good young guys. There's boys that have now stepped up. A few of them gone to Solway, and then you had the guys that are going the other way. Like obviously you had Kean, who's now going on a Solway Glasgow clan two way. So there's guys yeah. that were going two way between SNL and. National League last year, now doing a two way between National League and the clan yeah. this year. That's the that's the pathway. That's what we want. We want these kids to come from one to the next to the next, and off you go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I, I do think so. Yeah, to answer your question, there there should be another one. They should. I mean, don't get me wrong. The five Dund Dundee are doing well this year. The the elite, but to get crowds that some of them are getting, Edinburgh and Aberdeen are getting bigger crowds than, than the, some of these. So, why, why, I mean, they should, uh, a budget to play in that league, that's probably where it does break down a bit. You would need that, you do need a good budget to be travelling the length and breadth of the country all the time, but, Yeah, and putting more guys up and a bit more equipment. Like, like there, there is no doubt, like, the budgets are completely different. You'd have to have different sponsors. Yeah. You'd have to charge more for tickets. You'd have to have proper strength. But, like, from what I've seen, obviously, especially with Aberdeen, did a little bit with them last year, they are legit, like, organised. They sell out all the yeah. time. It's yeah. run brilliantly. It kicks back into the junior system. So they pay reduced fees for the kids. Like, It's they've got it sussed for the level they're playing at. Were they to go to a different level, 
then obviously maybe that model has to change ever so slightly. More income has to come in. But yeah. in terms of location, that was the first time I've ever been to Aberdeen. What a fucking weekend that would be for like a little double header up the road, like a little stop <laughs> in Solway and then like Aberdeen right on the coast there, some great bars and some good food. Aye. Like That's it'd be a fucking class happened. weekend if you're coming up for Swindon on the piss or something. Yeah. No, like I'm um I think it's well, I think it's one of the biggest things that should happen. Will it happen? I'm not so sure, but yeah. I don't know why I don't know what the draw is to the late league. I've got no idea. I don't know no idea of um why hockey people want other countries poor players to come and play in their country. I've no idea. But uh yeah. You never know. You never know. One of those SNL teams might say might join join up with Solway and decide to, you know what, I can give it a go. I'd love to see it. I would yeah. love to see it. And obviously the news come out this week, the Thursday the fourth, I think it is, might be the fifth of November, the work will start on a refurbishment at Planet Ice Basingstoke. So fingers crossed we'll have Basingstoke back in the National League before long. Yeah. And you know, that there is a real potential to have a north south firm if Basers don't jump in on the mix. Yeah. It's another southern team. There's other teams that are potentially ready in the NIHL North. So yeah. Who knows? They could, they could yeah, they, they could make it they, I don't want them to dilute the league in terms of talent. They they need to they would need to have the right amount of players at right amount of teams, sorry, with the right amount of imports. Because we don't want to bring in two teams that are going to lose fucking 12-2 every week. No, no. Exactly. It, and we also don't want to make a team that have currently got four good lines have three lines and a good one good guy. They're good because they have four good lines. We want to be able to keep the depth, but that across the entirety of the league. So it's going to come down to junior development. And it, we've got to start getting some more juniors through into these senior programs that can, can stick and... You know, not only stick, like make a difference. Yeah, yeah. I think the junior programs it really needs does need the uh, turned over on its head that uh, to 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 be able to, to have loads of kids play, and then the kid that might not be good, that ten year old might might have been absolutely amazing at sixteen. Yeah, you never know. So you've got to try and have some, a program where they're all competing against their their own level because that level would, could change. Amazingly, when they become young men, they, you know what I mean. And you, senior teams don't need amazing hockey players. They need you need players that do what they're told. They're few and far between. You yeah, can right. have ten, 10 good hockey players. I will guarantee you, I'll pick the I'll pick the ones that I'll pick one of them that would do what they're told. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey. Love that play yeah. team first hockey. Yeah, yeah, that's they're out there. But they don't get the chance because they're because their ability when they're young, so they push their side and then they'll never play hockey again. But uh, yeah, they've got the skate through brick walls. The skate through brick walls for you, but yeah, your your stick handling's not the best. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you're you're not going to get picked for the the team this week or next week or the next week, and then you're they're, you're they're away, they're away. Well, hopefully with the addition of the roller hub up there in five. And Kakodi, though, that you guys can kind of grab these guys and prove them, keep them involved, keep them passionate about the sport, keep them learning. Yeah. Um, Pluzi, anything else from, from you before I let you go? Anything no, you no, want to touch base on? Me. Yeah. Hey, pleasure. Absolute pleasure. No, I just said anything else you want to touch base on, but I think we covered quite a bit. I'm quite happy with that, mate. We uh smooth sailing. My, my, before we come on here, my audio wouldn't work for like 25 minutes. So I had oh, producer yeah. Graham. Shout out, producer Graham, for, for coming on and making all the audio work, unplugging bits and downloading bits and whatever. <laughs> Worked fine last week, and then this week it wasn't. So shout out, Graham. Ladies and gents, that's been another episode of 4000 and Counting. Make sure you check out Gloves Off. Pluzy, where can everyone find all the uh, the shop links and the, the Instagram and everything? Oh, no, the website is glovesoff.co.uk. Uh... Yeah, glovesoffclothing.com. Um, they both take you there. So, yeah. Can you access the roller rink through that? Is there, do you have a website or a Facebook or anything no, for the no, roller rink so no, far? The link's going to be on the website for it, but the roller hub, it's roller hub, U, roller hub UK, um, .co.uk. So, yeah, 
you can book you can book book an hour slot on your own for fifty quid if you want, uh, or good. for twenty guys, fifty quid for twenty of you to turn up for an hour. So yeah, that's very good. That's right. That's awesome. Hopefully, uh, I hope it's a massive success. Plusy, thanks for joining, ladies and gents. We will see you for another episode very, very soon. Peace. Yes, Lord.